hours of live streams on my channel all last week using GunTube. The software just works. The software works. And on that note, guys, I want to welcome all of you to Caliber Corner, episode number 112. And today we're going to talk about Every Second Matters. We're going to talk about the uh, 6.8 Remington SPC cartridge and why you should care about it. And we're also going to talk about maybe some good Black Friday specials or deals or anything that uh, we managed to uh, to pick up over the, uh, the holiday break. So real quick, let's go ahead and let the panel introduce themselves, put a plug in for their channel, and uh, we'll see who's joining us uh, over on the YouTube side and the gun channel side and we'll go from there so let's go and start off with uh gun snob gun snob how you doing today man I'm doing great how are you i'm doing okay it's a monday i can't complain you know we're going to talk about guns and ammo so it's it's kind of a highlight of the day uh you want to give us a little plug for your channel what can one expect to find if they come on over to your channel um stuff things you know stuff like that a bunch of gun and gear reviews and some other yeah. stuff so come over there check it out so give us a little spoiler. What do you got coming up in the works here? What are you working on? Any any little any little spoilers you can give us or anything you can tell? Like break the street date on, so to speak? Um, my next video is going to be my Polymer 80 build that I just completed. Okay. So that'll be out the end of this week, probably. That was the one that you got really cheap on Black Friday, right? No, I had it before that. <laughs> I no, didn't get no, the no. deal. I should have ordered another one then. But I know. Were they like $79 or something like that? Like $50, yeah, $60 like that. off? God, that's crazy. So, guys, make sure you check out uh, Gun Snob's channel. He's got a lot of great farms reviews over there. Lots of neat little toys to check out. And some wonderful drone footage. I'm jealous. I need to get a drone, too. We all need drones. So, Well, maybe we yeah, don't need yeah. drones. I don't know. Uh, fun. Drones for our channel, just not the federal drones, but our own drones. Yeah, yeah. there we go. But yeah, you got to have yeah. a drone pilot. It's a problem. So I have my son to be my drone pilot. Well, they got the new to, ones. It's hard to. Yeah. There, there's a couple of the ones that will follow you. You just have to have the app running on your phone and they'll stay yeah, the distance mine away will from follow you the me. angle. Yeah. Mine will do that. But every time I've tried it, it's just not that great. It's kind of like the wife. It just kind of follows you. You know, it's just yeah, not yeah, that great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Snob's wife. I know nah, you're gonna get you know. Uh, it doesn't move man. around much with you. It just that's right. You. That's right. We'll put we'll put David Bowling between us so that the hits go there instead. So speaking of which, uh, off to my uh, eleven o'clock spot over here is uh, Kingpin David Bowling. What's going on, man? How's it going? Anytime I can take one for the team, I'm glad to do it. Man. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate you doing that. So, so what can one expect to to find if they head on over to the to the Kingpin channel? Uh, probably not a whole lot of stuff. Uh, happy every second matters, everybody. There we go. And, uh, thanks for coming. Right on, man. Okay, I appreciate you joining us. And uh, we're doing this one on the gun tube. If you were watching this, you might have noticed I went live earlier accidentally. I put my stream key in gun tube. I, I hit start live stream. And for some reason, YouTube decided to, to go ahead and push me live. So you got to watch about three or four minutes of me sitting there just furiously typing away. Uh, doing some research on on some good gun deals and things like that. But uh, anyway, all right, man. Okay, moving over to my left here, Night Strike. What is up, brother? How you doing, man? I'm I'm doing good, and yeah, I do need a drone because you know I've got that 30 acres out back that I could you know do some videos on. There but, you go. Uh, I don't need I don't need a, a drone pilot to do that for for me because I've played enough. You know, uh, Star Wars X Wing versus Tie Fighter online. I know. Can't. I'm good. Uh, I'm good. Can you just put your cousin Ellis up in the tree and just pretend you got a drone and let him film? <laughs> <laughs> Go climb that tree over there. What are you talking about? Go climb that tree. And he's sitting up there I, filming. I have and he's to get one of those. Hovering I like have, this, it looks like you got a drone. You know, I have to get one of those hunting tree stands for him to get up there reliably. That's, uh, so, that's a know. redneck drone pilot, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go, tree stand. <laughs> he I like walks backwards up it, you know. That's a budget. That's a tr budget uh, drone pilot, is what that is. So yeah, he was telling me, you know, he posted on Facebook the other uh -huh. day that Lethal Weapon is the best Christmas movie, and I'm like, no, 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 man. It, the best Christmas movie either has to be Die Hard one or National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. But doesn't Lethal Weapon at the beginning have like a shootout, like in a, like a tree farm or something, <laughs> like in a parking lot at a gap? At a that you can't get more Christmas than that. Brawls over at the tree farm, you know. That's like brawls over Black Black Friday specials, you know. Uh, yeah, you have that, and you know, jingle all the way too. Just oh that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. So so real quick, nice right. What what shows can one expect to find if they head on over to your channel? What can one find? What kind of content do you have over there? I'm glad you asked because every mm -hmm. Tuesday night, you and I host this extra special chat called Hit or Miss Tuesday Night's Clock. It's been a hit. 
like the last couple of years. I just want to say that right now. Ever since I came on with episode ten, it's yeah. never been the same. It's been a hit constantly. So ever, ever, ever since Smeggy Smeggy disappeared in that blizzard, oh, off, dude, off, dude. Off, off the dude. coast of North Carolina, you know, it, you know, I, I, I've been looking for a new co-host, and Travis Travis stepped up to the plate. You know, brave as can be. I know, he's man. Helped me out I, ever since. I, I appreciate Travis. I get I get so nervous when we go live, and sometimes I just can't focus. I just don't know. I don't know if I can go on. Sometimes, man. I mean, you know, I think that blizzard came in. That blizzard you had last year, and it swept away the Smegster. I think that was his escape plan. He was going to wait for the blizzard to show up, and then the snowman just disappeared with the blizzard, and we never saw him again. He is legendary, though. He is legendary. But, He's but, always but in our like hearts. Frosty. Man. Yep. He will back. He will be back again someday. This is true. This is true. All right, man. So someday when we have the return of the Smegster, I will gladly step down as as the co-host of your show and uh, and let somebody else uh, acquire the reins, so to speak. So, but there there, there is one more thing. Yes, uh, we we've uh, infrequently. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it every Friday night. Mm-hmm. But infrequently, we're doing the uh, Friday night strike again. Oh yeah. That one, do you put that one out there? Is that invite only, or do you open it up to anybody who wants to join in? I mean, I'm usually on the road, so unfortunately I can't you get just have to ask or listen, link. but yeah. If, if anybody out there wants to jump in, all I have to do is ask for a link on that one, because that one's that was open for them. It's just me and whoever's on the panel just talking to the people on, on the uh, on the live chat on YouTube. Cool, cool. Just cool. kind of, you know, just kind of sit. It, 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 it's more or less just like a water cooler talk chat. Mm-hmm. Friday Night Strike is a is it's a good it's a fun program to listen to. It's just fun. I love listening to you guys and Roll Call and Gizzard Gary and everybody else that has shows and Gun Snob. So, all right, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you being here again. Thank you so much. And um, moving right along, we got uh, Squiblo joining us. Squiblo, what's going on, man? Oh, uh, you know, hanging out at work, making car parts. <laughs> and uh, Squib is uh, Squib's got a lot of content over in his channel. I want you guys to definitely make sure you check it out. We have a tendency to review a product and then we'll send it to the other person and kind of do it a little exchange. And then you might see some of the same product reviews, like coffee reviews and stuff like that, on our channels. And it's kind of fun to see what Squib has to say about it. Squib is actually becoming quite the uh, coffee sewer, if you will. He's quite the uh, I don't want to say coffee elitist, but you're definitely quickly becoming an expert in the field of, of all things coffee related. Squib, you realize this, right? You know, you and a whole bunch of other people have been some really bad, good influences on me. And um, <laughs> over Thanksgiving, I bought three new bags of coffee. Shot a review this morning. Whoa. Uh, Holy so, crap. Okay. Yeah, okay. Found another Michigan Dude, coffee brand right. that I hadn't, that I'd never had before. And uh, yeah. So um, yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Actually, we know yeah, what I the Leland on cherry is is fantastic. By the way, yeah, yeah, okay, and that the the cherry is they've got a chocolate cherry that's not too bad. But I got mm-hmm. another Michigan chocolate cherry, mm-hmm. and I tried it this morning, and it was not so much. I I'll publish the video. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it. I'll publish it tomorrow. I don't know. Okay. Maybe after the show. Maybe I'll just publish it after the show. It's not anything spectacular, but I will say this though: um, with uh, mm-hmm. the recent ones where we're both doing the blackout. Uh, I shot my Mm -hmm. videos before I watched your reviews, and it was kind of fun kind of seeing the similarities and the differences in our reviews. Uh, Well, I should say the first first two flavors, not the second two. The second two I did watch yours first, and I I, I shot them differently. Uh, You know, I don't always have the same opinion as you, but sometimes we have some of the similarities on there. And I know you're, you're more of a connoisseur than me. I'm trying to get up to speed here, but I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I do other kinds of videos. Some of them, some people might think are boring, and that's fine. You don't have to like what I do. It's, it's you know, I do this for me. But, um, yeah, you know, I, just the, the coffee thing has, has been a lot of fun. But you and, and some other people out there have kind of got me spending my money on things that I wouldn't normally do. So you're a bad, good influence. A good, bad influence. Dude, influence. spending money on, on good coffee, is the, that's, that's, that's money well spent. A good, a good cup of caffeine. And I'm not, like I've said before, and I'll say it a million times, I... I will drink any coffee as long as it's not decaf. I love instant. Uh, I carry little tubes of folders with me of instant just in case of emergencies in my school bag. I mean, I've got, you know, everything I need, but I'm not, I'm not coffee picky. I love basic gas station coffee. I just like to try all kinds of different coffee. I don't know what it is, but I mean, there's worse things I could be addicted to, I guess, you know, there's a lot worse things. So, 
Um, but yeah, so anyway, if you guys want to check out some top grade quality uh, coffee reviews, head on over to Squiblo's channel and uh, we'll go from there. And one thing else I want to mention real quick too, uh, if you ever see the listing for the topic for Caliber Corner, I usually don't put it up until about three or four days before the episode goes live. Uh, if you ever want to join in on an episode, just shoot me an email at thecalibercorner at gmail.com. You guys are always welcome to come join in. I mean, obviously if there's some kind of evil message you're spreading on the show while we're having it, we're going to boot you out. But for the most part, I mean, we try to have a family friendly show that, that people can enjoy and uh, kind of sit down and listen to with their kids or whatnot. And, you know, occasionally we have the occasional slip, but we get very emotional on the show sometimes too. So if you ever want to be on the show, uh, just shoot me an email, let me know. And we'll definitely send you a link and you're welcome to join in. If I ever miss that in the messages, it's probably because I'm not always watching the messages for the YouTube chat. I'm trying to watch the cameras and stuff like that. Uh, for the live stream. But anyway, you guys are always welcome to uh, to join in. So anyway, in case you're, you're new to the show, this is Caliber Corner. We talk about guns and ammo. Uh, my name is Travis P11, Travis P11. And uh, again, we hope you join us every Monday from, from 6 o'clock to about 7.30. And we have a lot of different topics we talk about. If you ever want to make a suggestion, uh, feel free to do so. So real quick, let's just see who's joining in now that it's been uh, a little while now. So we are looking at uh, DTEMP62 is out there. Storm and Norman's Gunworks is out there. Uh, Kingpin is out there. Ichoda or Ikoda uh, is out there also. Uh, Jason Stewart, Jim Burgess. And I apologize if I slaughter any of the names. I, some of these I'm seeing them for the first time. Snob's Wife is out there. Uh, Southpaw's out there too. Two Live Moo in the house. Calaveras 32 Special's out there. Hey, he's actually live. Yes, I am. I screwed up and went live earlier. Accidentally didn't know what I was doing. Scott P79 is out there also. Texas Blades in the house. Uh, 10X Shooters is joining us. Tacos and French Fries. Always Tacos and French Fries is out there too. Again, Snob's Wife 76. Weston Probst is out there also. Uh, he says the party has arrived. There you go. Yoder Texas is out there too. Jason Stewart. A lot of people joining in. Fusano 10 is with us. All right, Fusano. Welcome. Welcome. And uh, Night Strike. Night Strike was the first one to... Uh, to join in when you first got started. So so first things first, um, it is the second of the month, and it doesn't seem like I, I seem to have episodes that often on the uh, the second of the month. So we want to talk about um, every second matters and why it's important, especially going into this election year with all the elections coming up, and we've got counties and cities declaring sanctuary cities because they want to protect their two-way rights. Every Second Matters, just a little bit of information about it. If you're really curious, it's everysecondmatters.com. What is Every Second Matters? And this means something different to all of us on the panel. We'll let people share in a second. But Every Second Matters is an awareness campaign for 2A Amendment issues, Second Amendment issues. The goal is to start conversations about Second Amendment issues at the person-to-person -person level. We're not a news broadcast yelling at you. We're not screaming and hollering. We're not carrying banners and this and that. We just want to have a conversation about why we think a person's ability to, to, to bear uh, firearms is something that's important, right? How to participate, start a conversation about Second Amendment issues, especially on the second day of each month. There are some people that like to open carry on the second of the month, and that's how they celebrate their uh, Every Second Matters awareness, and that's fine. doesn't cost anything to join, and how to join, just go on over to everysecondmatters.com, and you can get yourself uh, more information. So the Second Amendment, why is it so important? Why is it so crucial to us right now? I want to open this one up to the panel, guys. What do you think? Are our rights under attack right now or not? Do we need to get comfortable? Do we need to get cozy and comfortable with Trump uh, as our president? What do you guys think? I don't think I like Trump. I like Trump a lot, and I think it's absolutely vital that he gets reelected. Uh, but I think that we make heroes out of people far too fast, and we raise them far too high. I mean, take just for example, not to drag it down, but Bill Cosby. You know, Bill Cosby was everybody's hero. Everybody loved Bill Cosby. He could do no wrong. And then we found out that he was doing a whole bunch of stuff wrong. You know, it's it's not bad to have somebody that you can look up to or lean on or, you know, admire or whatever, or follow, whatever you want to call it. But it, make sure you're your own hero, you know, or. or you know, one thing about this, and, and I hear what you're saying, uh, looking at gun sales and how much they were down uh, post-election. Um you know, just talking to gun store owners, looking at this fervor and just, just rash and fever to purchase guns and firearms leading up to the election. And then post-election, there's either we're, we're all out of money, we bought everything we wanted because we were scared, or we just got comfy thinking, okay, Trump's not going to pass anything, Trump's not going to do anything. 
And then, you know, Trump says things like take the, take the firearms first, due process later, or, uh, you know, no bump stocks. I'm going to recommend no bump stocks. The NRA says we can sit down and have a discussion about it, which means we're probably going to lose it. And we did. So, you know, you really, really got to stay active, guys. I know it's easy to get cozy, and I know it's exhausting when uh, we say, you know, write your senators, talk to your congressmen, your congresspeople, talk to your representatives, um, get active on the local level. You know, again, support the firearms industry by buying guns and ammo. Uh, show a demand. I mean, I, I I was looking at when I was Black Friday shopping, I was out on Friday for a little bit. And uh, I wasn't necessarily buying anything, but just kind of looking. I was at the Shield Sporting Goods store in Lincoln, Nebraska, and it was packed. That gun department was freaking packed. And they had some good deals. But there were background checks going on. I mean, there was just lines of people to buy firearms. And it was a beautiful thing. Not the background checks, mind you. But... Uh, you know, I, I think that that people maybe are starting to wake up a little bit and, and not only is the good deal a good thing, but just I'm, I'm starting to think that maybe the firearm sales are starting to pick up again. People are starting to care more about the rice. We're getting we're getting a little too comfortable and realizing we need to got, not get too cozy. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? You want to chime in at all about this? Every second matters. Does it still matter? It still matters. It's really look, despite all the complaining and devise it in whatever way that they feel is adequate, whether or not they think it's effective, they don't think it's effective, whether or not they have the money, the time, whatever it is. There are some people out there that do 20 different things, and there's somebody else who does one thing. And that person who does 20 will, will you know, complain about the person that, that does 19 less things, but they're doing something. How many people out there enjoy the fact that we have a Second Amendment and they do zero things? If you're doing one thing, you're okay in my book. If you're doing 20 things, hey, man, you're, you're stellar, okay? You're, you're going above and beyond. And sometimes when you start off doing one thing, maybe it leads you to do two things or five things or whatever it is. There's all kinds of different things we can all contribute in different ways. There are some people that don't have a lot of money to contribute to these gun rights organizations and things like that. But they, they have time, so they donate their time. There are other people that are kind of they, – they've got – they're either working a lot, they're disabled and, and really can't travel too far, whatever it is, but they got money in the bank like nobody's <laughs> business and they donate money. And, and people will, I don't think they understand that, you know, being involved isn't always about as much as I like going to rallies, going to rallies or being a member of as many gun rights organizations or taking somebody to the range or emailing you. All of that stuff is, is something that you can do. The more you do, the better. But if you're doing something, you're doing more than most. So I, I think if you don't want to see it go away, you've got, to, you've got to get involved in one way or another. If you have children or you have uh, nieces and nephews or, or you know, friends with children and you want them to be able to enjoy the same rights we have, if not better, in the future, long after you're gone, then if, if you're fighting now, you're going to help protect that. But if you just go, ah, it's their problem, well, then, yeah, you, you just – you, you're not you're not helping you're not helping and and for those that that don't have a vested interest it's it's just a it's a different thing yeah i mean it's it's one of those things where again yeah you've got to think about the future a lot of people are just comfortable thinking oh i got mine oh they're never going to come after my my bolt action or whatnot and i'm not just going after fuds i'm just saying that again it's just it's so easy to just get complacent and get comfortable and just think oh you know there's nothing to worry about and uh, before you know, you start looking at, at more and more uh, infringements being passed against us. And, uh, you know, we got to stay active, people. It's not going to go away. And again, going into the next uh, election year here, you need to really, really check out those people that you're voting for. You know, you, we need to have discussions with their friends and family. And, uh, you know, again, just arm yourself with knowledge and uh, do what you can to spread the message about the, important, the importance of the Second Amendment. That's all I got to say, you know. Whoa. Did you have something, Snobby? Go ahead. Uh, for the for a lot of people think that it's not going to happen to me. Also think that when they come to get me, they're going to have a fight on their hands. You know, they're the, you know kind of people that they're going to barricade the door and have a mm -hmm. fire fight with the government. The government is extremely good at what they do. Now the government is extremely bad at what they're supposed to do. You know, govern and follow the law and and be very very insignificant in our lives. But being corrupt and dishonest and hateful and evil, they're really good at that. Do you think that the government's going to come door to door? Of course not. They're going to wait until you have a tag light out, Travis. 
and then they're going to pull you over and confiscate all your weapons on the side of the road. And you are not going to have a shootout with the cops on the side of the road. It's not going to happen. Yeah, and when it does happen, the ambulance is going to come pick you up. That's it. That's, you know, so if you're not active and you let these bills get passed and you, oh, it's not going to happen to me or I'm going to stand and fight because I've got to, I'm going to fight and shoot because I'm a bad to the bone. No, dude, they're going to, they're going to legislate you and tax you out of existence. And then they're going to pull you over when you have a tag light out and take you to jail that way. They're not coming here. The government's not <laughs> stupid. We'll see. Oh, go ahead. God, I was going to say, I, and I think a lot of you, maybe your local municipalities or local police aren't necessarily going to come at you either because they don't want to risk their own lives, especially if you're in a, in a pro-gun state where they know people aren't going to be afraid to just lose it all to stop tyranny, you know? Uh, real, uh, quick, uh, real quick, just before I let Snob go, I'm sorry, Snob, but the cop, cops will tell you this. You have to be lucky every day. I have to be lucky once. That's it. So if you're going to illegally carry a gun around, every moment that you're outside your house, you have to be lucky. All that cop has to do is catch you step off the sidewalk when there's a no walking sign or something. Mm -hmm. All the, the cops just got to be in the right place at the right time to catch you do something that you didn't even think you were doing. Yeah. Well, see, my whole thing is the time to fight is now, and it's not a uh, fight with bullets and such. It's a fight with voting and a fight with the next generation. And I always preach on that. We got to push these kids to be, and I think that I really honestly to God believe the generation coming up is more pro gun than my generation was. And that's my honest opinion. Just due to video games and all that, they're very interested at a young age. Movies, access mm -hmm. to movies and, and streaming and, and, and videos. And, and I mean, and I, I can't I can't speak because I live in a very rural area where there there is a gun culture out here. There's a hunting culture. There's ranges. It's not shocking to see people open carry. Nobody cares if you walk out to your car with your rifle. Nobody's going to call the cops on you. I mean, it's just it's a whole different environment where I am. So I don't see that and hear that. I don't see that in the school that I work in. I don't I don't hear that in my environment. Sometimes at church I do, and that bothers me. Uh, kind of an anti gun vibe, but uh, you know. Just for me, I, I can't. I can't speak a little where I live in an environment. I could imagine being in that kind of an environment where, if I open carried into whatever any place where I'm allowed to, that somebody could freak out and call. And in fact, like I've said before, where I live in the area I live in, if you were to open carry and you're wearing like a coat or whatever and jeans, and you're open carrying and you go in some place, somebody might think you're law enforcement. They might think that you're not a recover or something or off duty cop or sheriff or something. So out here, it's not. I don't get that kind of feel. So to me. Just the thought of not even being able to have that right is just, it's beyond, I can't even comprehend it. And it scares me to think that we have environments where that kind of thing can happen, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. You drive over an imaginary line and it's a totally different world. Would you say Oklahoma is just kind of, in, are there any areas of Oklahoma that are kind of like the Austin or the Chicago or the not LA even, or the I New mean, York? They're Oklahoma? not even big enough to, Yeah, you know, we voted every, every county in Oklahoma voted red. In the last election, I yeah. mean, presidential election, every single county went red. So there's really not. I mean, yeah, the bigger cities have small pockets of that, but not not really yeah. like a lot of the states. And what get, where it gets dangerous is where a lot of your bigger cities are the ones that have all the voters, and they're the ones that can swing or control. You know, look at Illinois with Chicago, or look at New York mm -hmm. State with New York City, you know, uh, just the influence that those can have over well, the just look out everyone else. Going. Just look yeah. how Texas is going. Texas is turning purple a lot faster than people want to admit. But it's, it's all those people from, yeah, from California moving to Texas. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? <laughs> well, Austin and Houston. Mm -hmm. You, you mm -hmm. talk about the big cities High having populated the big areas. influence. You talk about the big cities having the big influence, but look what happened in Virginia. People didn't get off their butt and vote, and now they're paying oh, the price. And now they're scrambling to do this sanctuary county crap that may or may not work, and it's really kind of a – uh, not, I mean, it's better than nothing, but really what they should have done is get off. That's why I say get involved. It, even if you're just doing one thing, even if you're just a member of the NRA or one of your local, you know, your, your state groups, or if you just send emails, or if you just, you, you take new people to the range all the time, or the list goes on and on, all the things you can do, but definitely. Or if you just thing, go vote. Just go vote, Yes. <laughs> it is one of the most, and the people go, my vote doesn't count, it doesn't matter. You are the problem. 
<laughs> you're the problem. It, just to address that real quick, for the for people who think that your vote doesn't count and why bother, multiply that by five years, mm-hmm. eight years, ten years. That that you and, and your whole neighborhood or all your buddies or everybody that you know said, you know, to pots with the vote and I'm not gonna bother. Ten years later you've got a completely different state. Yeah. Here, here's another one. If you've got a free hour, okay, look at how much time we waste just looking at garbage online or playing video games or watching movies or whatnot. If you got an extra hour per month or a couple hours per month, you're gonna you're gonna maybe laugh me out of this one. Join your city council. Get involved on your school board. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things that a lot of people could do because those city councils, you know, they pass those little ordinances and stuff, and that has a huge impact on people. And it's like you don't ever seem to hear about pro two A people on city councils. Are we that? laid back and lazy where we just rather let somebody else deal with it and do it, you know? I don't know. It's, just a, it's just a terrible attitude. You know, get 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 active on your city. Be the pro two-way person that ticks everybody off on your city council, you know? get You get elected. Easy. I'm going to go on a pro two-way platform. Vote for me. I don't want the government to take your guns. Dude, you'd be, you'd be voted in in no time in a lot of places, you know? You'd be elected a, in no time. As a parent, I can say, pass this on to your children. Start them off with firearms safety. You're going to get rid of the curiosity factor, and they're less likely to become a statistic due to some sort of accident that happened when they went over to their friend's house where their dad doesn't keep their stuff locked up or their mom doesn't keep their stuff stuff locked up, and somebody's handling a loaded gun. They even had a situation here two years ago in the city next door where a bad guy ditched a gun in the yard. He was running from the cops and ditched a gun, and kids found it later, and they were playing with it, and one of them shot the other one in the face with it. So if you take away that curiosity factor by teaching them firearm safety, even if they never handle guns on a regular basis later on in life, or maybe one day they do, but at least, and you don't even have to have a gun to do it. I was with my nephew over Thanksgiving weekend, and he had his grandpa's airsoft gun, and he's out there, and he's muzzling everybody and things like that, and I'm like, no, 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 and I'm going over the, the four basic firearm safety rules with him, even though this ain't a real gun, and he's starting to act safer with it and the whole thing is i want him to understand that even though this doesn't shoot real bullets it doesn't matter if you can do it with this and you can do it with a real gun if you ever end up handling one not not that i am encouraging you know kids to go out and get a hold of their guns they should have parental supervision but another thing is i know some people uh the the spouse says no not my kid not my okay Dude, I got news for you. You picked the wrong person to marry, okay? Because that's something you need to iron out in the beginning before you put the ring on the face. I, I, I did three times, okay? So that's a line you don't cross with me or else, yeah, we're done. Let's just not go any further with this relationship. But I'm telling you that even if she's not on board with or he's not on board, because there are plenty of women out there who have got beta male uh, husbands, not on board with with introducing the children to firearms just from the simple fact so they know how to it's like sitting down and having a conversation with the kids about using protection uh, you know for it, when when that time comes or about knowing about drugs so they don't get involved in it or something it's just a responsible mm-hmm. thing to do but the thing is if your child shows an interest then let them pursue that interest get them you know we gave we gave our our younger son a 1022 for getting straight a's on his report card not for his birthday not for christmas simply for getting straight a's on his report card he was just blown away by it and travis you've seen him with that thing he eats through ammo so that sounded pretty bad there yeah it, it, <laughs> what I, he was blown yeah. away by it. Like, oh, well, no, just by the well, fact that no, he, he was, he, you know, was he, he gets a gun. He, gets a gun he was amazed days. by so the, the gift. You saw him there. I couldn't feed. I couldn't <laughs> yeah. reload the, the magazines as fast as the kid could shoot the thing. And he was just he having a, a brick you know, of and, like 525 in an hour. That, yeah. that, 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 that 1022 was smoking hot, dude, literally. <laughs> but it, it's simple things like yeah. that that you yeah. can do that will keep your kids safe. It will take away that curiosity factor. Maybe they are interested in it. And maybe you do. You know, and the next quality family time. Our whole family goes to the range together. All four of us are down there at the range shooting together, and yeah. it's a family time. One year, my wife wanted to go to the range for Mother's Day. There are all kinds of things you can do to be involved, in addition, you know, to voting or, or getting in, into your firearms rights or just staying informed. That that can can bring this, uh, you know, fight or bring this this attention to the next generation, so that they're not as ignorant. So when somebody's there saying. Yeah, do you know that an AR-15 weighs as much as 10 moving boxes and shoots a 50 caliber bullet 30 seconds, uh, 30 rounds a second and all this other stuff? The kid can go, no, that's absolutely wrong. And, 
you know, it, it's like one time some guy in, in the department <laughs> store said yeah. to my younger son, hey, that, that BB gun over there looks nice. I bet you'd like that. And he looks over and he goes, why? I've got a real gun. And the guy was shocked, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, my, I've got an AR. Why would I bother with that? What's the <laughs> yeah, I mean, and my, and my um, older quick, son was the only one in civics class awesome. that would stand up for the Second Amendment when the teacher was trying to tell all the kids that it was bad that Americans own guns. So it's, it's up to us to get the, yeah. the, the next generation involved. Oh, I agree totally. I agree totally. Um, we do have a quick uh, reloading question for you, Squid. Maybe you can order this one. And, and uh, Ecoda out there kind of answered it already. Um, Tim Esk says, I'm thinking of getting into reloading. I've got a 308 AR-10 and a 300 Blackout. Do I need dies for both or just one set for both? Ecoda says for one both. for caliber. Yeah, they're both 30 cal, uh, one set for caliber. Same, same bullet. So they're going to have bullet. a discussion on that. Yeah, same yeah. bullet, different dies. Yep, yep. Ecotus says nothing would interchange, not even the shell holder. So there you go. Um, DTEMP62 says, my wife always asks me if I'm armed when I'm on the way out the door. Got me a good woman. Yes, you do, DTEMP. Heck yeah. Um, there was another question that popped up here. Oh, here we go. And uh, David, maybe you can answer this one because, Kingpin, this kind of goes along with what well, you and I had a discussion on a couple days ago. If the state police come in to enforce gun laws, can the sheriff say no? So, David, what's your interpretation of that? Uh, it's uh, yes and no. Okay, it, it all comes down to specific jurisdiction, and jurisdiction comes down to the level of offense. Because okay. if you're just, I'm just make up something. If you get caught stealing a pack of gum at the at the country store, you know you're going to have the local PD come and slap you on the wrist. If you rob the local country store, you're going to have you know some more interesting. Co if you it blow up the country store, then, you know, what I'm trying to get at is as the level of offense goes up, the jurisdiction changes hands because eventually you'll get to where it's, it's, it's a state issue. You know, yeah. if, you, if you were, I, I don't even know, there's so many different crimes. I don't feel like listening to a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, once it's out of the, it's no different than like you see on TV when the FBI shows up. You know, when, when one, one bomb goes off, the state police are handling it. When 15 bomb goes off, the guys with the black suits come in and take over, and, you know, act yeah, like yeah. for the rest of the movie. So it's, it really all comes down to jurisdiction. But for the most part, your state police aren't going to be interacting with you in your. Do you say it kind of depends? It also kind of depends on how your your if your state police is the one that's in charge of the whole firearms regulation for the state, I guess, in terms of maybe issuing permits and and pushing for certain laws and regulations and stuff like that. So, I mean, it really does depend on the state too. So, hopefully, we answered your question there. Um, Tacos and French fries says, "I'm just getting into reloading. Made some purchases over the holiday weekend." And uh, I think we'll get into that as our next topic here. Uh, Tim S says, yeah, I think I'll start out with the Lee anniversary kit. That's what I have. That's great. Now, unfortunately, mine's all boxed up because I'm moving in a couple months, but um, I'm hoping to get back into that once uh, once I get I moved. So I wouldn't recommend, yeah, I wouldn't recommend even messing with it until after you get settled into the new house because you'll get partway through it and you're going to have to pack everything up and then you're going to go, okay, where was I? And you're just going to backtrack. You're, you're better off waiting. Yeah. Once we get kind of everything settled and we know what we need in the new place that we're going into and whether or not we're going to buy or rent and if I have a dedicated workspace and stuff. So I want to make sure it's a place where I can go and, and focus and concentrate when I do it and just enjoy it uh, in general. So um, so talking about some of the deals, did you guys pick up anything good for, uh, for, for Black Friday at all? Did you guys pick up anything? Nice work. I know you got a few little electronic doodads here and there, but did you guys pick up anything uh, firearms related at all, guns and ammo or... No, I ha I did want to go and get a, uh, a shotgun that I saw that was on sale for ninety nine bucks, but I didn't because, Ooh. well, I ran out of money, more or less. So that happens. I, that can I, happen. I, I probably should have spent as much on that TV as I did. So, hey, you know, it, yes, you know, things happen. So you still got a good deal on the TV, though. It was still, you know, nice kind of entry-level price and stuff. It's not like you dropped a whole lot onto it. Not versus what we spent for flat screen TVs 10 years ago, so. Yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah. All right. Gunsnob, did you find anything good at all? Did you find any good deals? Did you pick anything up? Uh, yeah, I bought a safe. I finally gave oh. it and upgraded my safe. Okay, cool. Thing. 
Nice. How about an 80 grand save? Yeah. Where'd you pick that up at? Oh, you get it? Really see it. Where was that at? I got it at Dunham's. Okay, okay. All right. Sporting goods. That yeah, was and my son say, got a... Uh, yeah. That I had to wait an hour and a half to get him to wheel it out, and then five guys load a 900-pound safe because they don't have a <laughs> forklift. Did you pull up? Did you pull up in a in a black pickup truck with a Harley Davidson trailer behind it? Okay. No, it was a that wasn't pickup. you then. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> my son did. Yeah, my son did no, save us some money. He's not disputing the Harley Davidson trailer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Not. He bought a uh, Mossberg Patriot. Oh, yeah. In six five nice. three, I have one of those. That's a that's a it's not a bad little gun, man. It's it's perfectly good for what it is. No, it's a yeah. nice shooting yeah. little gun. The scope it came with is absolutely I, trash. But I got rid of mine. Was it just a optic. was it a was it wasn't even a Bushnell? Was it? it was just kind of an off brand. It's no, it was like some dead yeah, ringer or something. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It but uh, you know, but the gun itself. Pick really up, just nice. get yourself a nice little vortex to throw up on there, or a nice little Nikon or something, and you know, yeah. I think I gave him a Nikon because they're okay. on sale for a while because they're supposed to be getting out of the business. So and that's my favorite. Yeah, it should brand, make it decent. So. I don't know what the what the magazines cost for, but really for just a kind of a dedicated deer rifle, it's not like you're going to need quick reloads. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think he's just he bought it to either deer or coyote hunt with mainly, and he decided to go with six five. I just let him pick whatever he wanted, and that's the one he picked out. Let he's me know 14, how that shoots. So. I did not have the best luck with core locked ammo. I mean, it was it was just not the best groups at all. It's very inconsistent. So I'm going to try it with a few different other brands. Uh, we bought Federal American uh -huh. Hunter. I think was what they had on sale at Dunham. So we just bought whatever was on sale there with it. I bought him a couple boxes with it. Well, he bought one, and I bought the one, the, the second one that was forty okay. percent off because that's a, how nice of a guy I am. And you can. <laughs> But we were shooting, we were getting like a little over inch and a quarter with that crappy okay. scope on it. And I think, and it was windy and rainy. Ah, you should so be able to pull off an inch with some better, with some better ammo. Uh, Winchester makes a 6.5 Creed yeah. or just Winchester white box. That's like $8 for 20 rounds or something. It's a real fair price for just, for just really? basic range. I've got a, I've got a box something he can just yeah. twink with. It's, and you can keep the brass from it. Um, and I played around, I mean, I played around with uh, Hornady Superformance, which is about $40 a box. And that stuff is amazing. That is some just wicked awesome ammo. Um, but yeah, I've got about five or six. And I've got some garage guns, custom loaded some for me too, that I'm going to take out here eventually. I've decided to finally break down and, and uh, dial in my three rifles that I need to zero uh, with an indoor range. And so I might talk to you guys about this off camera too. Um, like just, just the adjustments I need to make on it. Um, it's going to be 25 yards is the only thing I can do because I just can't, I can't find that there's not enough daylight to get out to my range during the week. It's getting dark at five o'clock and I don't get home from work until four and, uh, the weekends are out. So I'm really running out of time to get to the range until spring comes around and I don't want to wait till the summer. So I might do some, some zeroing at 25 yards and try to figure out how that's going to impact things up to a hundred. Cause I'm going to have to re-zero again, but I just want to get them on, get them at least on something. So I know I can use them if I need to, um, but uh, yeah, the 6.5 is one of those ones. I finally put new glass on it too, and I'm going to use better ammo with it and see what it can actually do. Because that was like a, like a 200. Well, I've never even shot a 6.5. How much was before. that? Was that 229 with the scope? Is that. two? It was 249, okay. I think, with the scope. But that's a pretty good looking yeah, rifle. Yeah. Oh, it was a nice looking Yeah, it's not, it's not bad at all. It's, 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 it's fairly lightweight, and it's got a nice build to it and stuff. It's got kind of the fluted mm -hmm. um, um, bolt on it and stuff. And, yeah, fluted barrel and like yeah, a fluted yeah, bolt yeah. too, yeah. Yeah, she's decent. So, um, Squib, did you find anything for Black Friday at all? Did you pick up anything good? Yeah, Man, maybe uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, I picked up uh, ammo for Christmas. Makes a great Christmas present. No, oh. there were some really good rebates on that that are going on right now. What that Federal Black ammo, which is like some relatively inexpensive bulk packaging ammo that I've seen. Um, so when I was at Dunham's uh, yeah, on Black yeah. Friday, uh, watching somebody other than Snob pick up a safe, even though Snob was picking up a safe at the same time, uh, they had some there in 223, and the box looked like it had been smashed and retaped. So I decided not to buy it. That was something I was going to put underneath the tree. Uh, the, the next nearest store did not have a sale, and it was about $15 a box or a case, whatever you want to call it. Uh, more, so I said no. Then I went online and looked for it, and uh, where I looked, it was out of stock. I could have looked a whole bunch of other places, but I'm like, nah. What I ended up doing was uh, Midway USA had some uh, powder-coated 22 long rifle in red and green Christmas colors. Mm -hmm. 
So I picked up oh. some of that. So Chris, <laughs> Christmas ammo. It's not the first time I've bought some sort of box of ammo go. that that said Christmas on it. You know. You got the stockings hanging up. It looks like there's like four bricks in them, like literal mason bricks hanging in the stockings. You know, they're kind of like stretched I've, out and stuff. I've <laughs> I've put I've put pin punches, armors, wrenches, boxes of shells, flag safeties. Uh, cleaning gear, you name it, in, in those stockings before. Uh, it, magazines, I always have magazines oh, for, for Christmas. You never enough magazines for Christmas. They just, so. they just speak of ballastol, you know, the, the stockings just speak yeah. of ballastol, you know. <laughs> yeah, another, another good thing that, that mm. makes a good Christmas present, I, I, I've already bought them off of Amazon earlier in the year, but uh, firearms books, anything on the history of firearms or something like that, especially oh. if somebody maybe wants to study a little bit about mill serves or something like that, but there's tons of books available. And if you really get into to guns, you know, you end up developing your own library, at least a bookshelf full of books. So if you're really not too sure, but maybe somebody's, you know, they've got something, but they really don't know a whole lot about it, go and look and see. There probably is a book or 10 on that particular gun, especially if it's a mill serve and you could order it for them and then they can, yeah. you know, reference those markings on it or learn a little bit more about the history or something like that. Yeah. If you go to like a lot of your bookstores, you've got those uh, like small arms of the 20th century books you can get that have a lot of pictures in them. I used to look at those all the time when I was a kid, they used to have the, they had ones that had airplanes in them and, and military boats and, and firearms and things like that. Um, those little books are great. And sometimes you can get them for like five or $10. They're a nice uh, hardcover, which is really good. Oh, let's see here. So, David, did you find anything? Kingpin, anything good out there uh, for you? No, I don't usually. I don't usually shop for that kind of stuff. Uh, I did start looking for my Bushmaster, uh, the, the SOCOM upper. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But uh, I think I, I think the price will probably be relatively the same near Christmas too. So I'm sure it'll be on sale again. And I'll probably I'll probably get it around that time, but okay. uh, if if people were so inclined to do some shopping on this holiday season, and today being Cyber Monday, I'm going to put a link out in the chat to Gear Websites, everybody's favorite place for Second Amendment swag. Uh, G Webs is having a Cyber Monday extravaganza today so go check out gear websites and you can get a bunch of free stuff and watch the daily gun show tonight to pick your free patch there you go there man you go. Good stuff going on. lots of goodies out there heck yeah so make sure you check it out uh let's see ecode is saying what about the 458 hammer we've we've talked about 458 hammer i think almost a year ago um but that could be another caliber that we definitely bring up in the uh in the discussion here so uh, let's see. Ecota says, Dirty Santa ammo, Christmas ammo, birthdays ammo, LOL. Yeah, there you go. I give out ammo for Christmas, says Ecota. Yeah, it's a perfect gift. He just keeps giving, you know, shot after shot after shot at the range. So, there we go. I need someone to someone to buy me ammo for Christmas. Nice, birthday, instead of us being that. having to be the ones that always mm -hmm. buy and give up the ammo every year, you know? Um, and I'll tell you guys, if you're looking at buying in bulk, right now is, is the time to do it because I'm seeing so many places that are doing free shipping, a lot of places like Target Sports USA or any of those places where you go through for ammo, I'm, I'm seeing right now I'm looking at getting at least a thousand rounds of uh, 762 by 39 so I can start playing around with the AR-47 here pretty soon. Um, just want to figure out what runs well through it. I want to get that dialed in and get it zero. Then after that, we can start having some fun with it. Hopefully going to do that on Saturday. That's that's the plan right now. So we'll see what happens. Part of it is we keep getting blizzards on the weekend, so I'm finally going to break it in at an indoor range. Yes, I mean definitely ammo is one of those things. And you know, like on that on that uh, that federal black ammo, I was seeing, you know, like a thousand rounds of of, of nine millimeter was like one thirty nine or one twenty nine after rebate. Uh, there's some really good rebates going on right now too. I'm seeing uh, Smith and Wesson Shield rebates that'll get you fifty dollars back on that. Also, you can get fifty bucks back on the Easy. Um, last night on uh, Rich White's chat, or the other night on which yeah Rich White's chat, we were talking about. Uh, the rebates on the they had the Taurus G2C with the Viridian laser on it, and that was that was an amazing deal. It's almost like you're getting the gun for fifty bucks once you figure in the price of the laser. Is there any are there any other good deals out there right now, guys? Is there anything else that's still? I was seeing Cabela's had the P365s in black or two tone for three ninety nine, which is a really really good price. That's a hundred bucks below anybody for them for the most part. Have you guys seen anything else at all that's looking decent?
I've seen all sorts of stuff that looked decent. I just didn't have yeah. the money to pay for it. I was going to spend all my money on a safe. Well, I put off buying a safe for several years, buying a new bigger safe, yeah. and I finally decided I just need to not buy a gun this bike right in and buy a safe for yeah. on sale. Just checking out uh, Gun Dot Deals real quick. Um, oh, Primary Arms has got those Palmer 80 Glock frames for seventy four ninety nine. dollars Sorry about that, Gun Snob. Um, CCI Blazer mm -hmm. Brass, 1,000 rounds, 115 grain for one fifty two. You want some good plinking ammo? Um, AR500 Armor has a nice $99 ammo uh, armor package going on you can get right now. Uh, let's see, Apex has got a couple. Brownells has got some Apex triggers on sale. Get a Vortex Spark 2 of Brownells for 109 The Nikon P Tactical Rifle Scope, $99.95. 90, 90, it's a 1.5 to 4.5 power 20mm uh, reticle scope for 100 bucks. 10 bucks on shipping and handling. Euro Optic. Have you guys ever ordered anything from Euro Optic before? I've been getting a lot of ads from them lately. Do you guys know much about them? Mm -hmm. what, what's the other optics place that's really popular? Help me out here. There's the one company that I've got their boxes floating around here someplace. Vortex Optics, optics Planet. Planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sitting there thinking Optics Planet. I haven't gone. I haven't gone to their website for so long, but um, uh, Amazon's got a nice uh, SOG or SOG Tactical Responder Shooting Range Bag for fourteen ninety nine. After the twenty five percent off coupon, Optics Planet's got Geisley uh, charging handles for forty eight ninety nine. Here's Federal Premium Black Pack two twenty three Remington twelve hundred rounds fifty five grain for three fifty nine ninety two two fifty nine ninety two after a hundred dollar mail in rebate. Oh my god! With free shipping and handling from Academy, that's that's a really good deal. Twelve hundred rounds for two fifty nine because usually a thousand rounds is going to run you. Three hundred dollars. I, I like to shoot sixty-two grand on up, but again, you know, if you want to just get it, twenty-two cents per round. That's a really good deal after rebate. And a lot of you don't like to mess around with rebates, but still, it's an option for you. Was that range um, tag on I'm Amazon? The, uh, yes, yeah. Sog Tactical Responder. You go to Gun Dot Deals. It's it's right on the main page. Yep. But it's it, got. It looks like you can hold maybe six magazines. In it. Yeah. But that's on the Amazon site. Yes, it's over at Amazon.com. Yep. So if you go to Amazon.com, maybe you want to use somebody's affiliate link. Maybe somebody on this panel. Oh, there you go. Or go yeah, to like Amazon. Maybe going, going over to. Oh yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Or, no, or, no. Or go, was it? Go I can't to... remember. No. Was it? That's got Amazon on it. Who's who's got the Amazon link? Well, I think Snop's got it, right? It's not me. You've got, yeah, I've got it. I'm sure nice an affiliate link, too. or you can go to Amazon Smile and see if your state firearms, your your gun rights organization has an Amazon Smile page. So either an affiliate link for a gun okay. channel member, or Amazon Smile for your state firearms, your state Second Amendment organization. Take a look around. Might as well send a little bit right of money, uh, you know, to one place or another that's that's out there uh, fighting for your rights. So. Just something to think about. Give it to somebody who's not Amazon anyway. Well, yep, the other thing exactly. too is on the range exactly. bag thing. If you're the dad and you take the whole family to the range and you've got the big heavy range bag with everybody's stuff in it, if you buy everybody in your family their own range <laughs> bag, it lightens your load. I'm just saying. It might have worked for me one Christmas. You know, at $15 per person, that's a cheap investment for your back when you think about it. You know, they can all put six magazines in there. There's a huge <laughs> central pouch. You know, there's a pouch on the end there too that you can use. Um, yeah, that's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Here's a Ruger EC9S for one seventy nine forty nine over at Sportsman's Guide. Nine ninety nine shipping and handling. I think I paid two twenty for mine. Um, I also saw a really good deal here. I was looking at it. Savage Axis XP um, for two seventy no one ninety nine after seventy five dollar mail in rebate over there at uh, Cabela's. Free two day shipping, no minimum. Of course, you got to go through your FFL or pick it up at at Cabela's. They probably still have some of those in stock. I was in there. Um, what was it? A couple days before Thanksgiving, and man, they were packed. There were people picking up stuff left and right. Um, that's got two true true tim true timber strata camo, and so that's uh, yeah, two hundred bucks. I don't know how much longer that's going to be running. But that's a really good deal. That comes with an optic, by the way. Uh, so yeah, there's still a lot of good deals we had out there. If you guys are builders, there's a lot of good deals on some lowers. So Aero Precision lower for forty seven ninety nine. Uh, PSA's got their. 5.56 nitride full auto bull carrier group for $49.99. Here's one I've had trouble finding. Impact Guns has got the Ruger Wrangler 
with that uh, gray Cerakote finish with the black cylinder for 169 Those were like 249 when they first came out. Or 200 or 249 And I haven't been able to find one anywhere. They're sold out everywhere. Like I was looking on Buds, they were gone. What did you say had the bulk uh, carrier PSA's got, uh, got their nitride MPI, uh, full auto bulk carrier groups for forty nine ninety nine. Gizzer Gary needs yeah, one. I think he needs a couple, doesn't he? Yeah, yes, I heard about that. Trying to run a 762 pull yeah. through there. And then, shame on, shame <laughs> on him for trying that. Now, doesn't he understand metric? <laughs> no, nah, I'm just messing with you. Yeah. <laughs> he he contacted that company like, yeah, we'll send you one. But he's like, he has to send his other one in first. The one they sent him wrong. I was like, oh, oh that's dude, that's crap. garbage, man. Anyway, so that's like, terrible. How yeah, and he's like, I can't even make it to the post office till Friday. <laughs> and here's the thing. How many people really call up that company with that problem? You know that that one in one thousand yeah. calls where you <laughs> screwed up. Come on, man, make it right. They could get his. They could get all the contact information they need from him. They could even get like a credit card number from him. So if he lies and doesn't send it back in, he'd get charged, you know, thirty bucks or whatever for the price of the new bull. Yeah. Um, man, that's ridiculous. That, I really figured they just. I really figured they just tell him, oh, "I'll just keep it and just send him a new bolt when he's in the picture," because you know they ain't got nothing in those bolts. Oh yeah, like yeah. That. I mean, you can get you can get so bolts for twenty was, bucks online and readily. You know, just the bolt itself, complete bolt itself for twenty dollars. Yeah. So, I think he was going to go online and just order one and just say or send that one back and get the right one. And just whenever he builds another one, he'll yeah. have an extra bolt. Well, that's good though. Yeah, he just keeps another one, and now he can start doing his seven sixty two by thirty nine build. There you go. Well, yeah, get yourself a stripped upper just, keep that one and build your just go buy a complete upper to put on there, and then you've got an extra bolt if you ever need it because you might break an extractor shoot a steel case out of it. You never know. So it's it's always good to have extra parts, but he's got to send it back, so I guess it doesn't matter at this point. So I'd say, no, it's your screw up. I brought this yeah, thing back, you know, so many hundreds of miles, and and this is what happened to me. You know, it could have could blew up yeah. on me, but that's fine. You want me to spend this postage to send it back to you? <laughs> All right. So... Yeah, yeah. I told him. I said I'd send it post. You do to say him. this I is a possible medical bill. I would have been looking at it. That thing would have would have messed up at any point, blown up in my face. You know, that would have been a hell of a first round through your AR. That's going to scare somebody away from AR fifteens. Yeah. <laughs> I pulled the trigger the first time. Yeah, he was it blew up on me. Saturday. He's like, man, this thing won't run at all. We're like, oil it and shoot it more. Just oil oh yeah. It more. I would have thought about that. that. You know, <laughs> and and maybe did he, did he clean it before he took it out? I mean, you wouldn't know unless you really, you might not be thinking about it, but I would have been very, I mean, I, that's why I always take my parts and clean them before I take, I, I've had, you know, guide rod springs installed yeah, backwards. I've had, about it. He never, what's that? He probably didn't, he wouldn't have yeah. known the difference so truthfully probably in the bolt unless you just read it. Cause nobody would have, I seen the bolt. I would have never noticed it unless I just read it. The, the only difference yeah. is just the diameter of the. Of it. Let's see. Ohio 45 ACP says pick up a black Wrangler at LGS for 179. Yeah, I think I want to pick one up. I, I I've been told, and I'm not trying to make fighting words here. I've been told that they're a little bit higher quality than the um uh what are the other ones, guys? Help me out here. What's the other 22? The no, I'm completely drawing a blank here. The 22, 22 the Rough, Rough Rider. Rider. Yeah, the Heritage Rough Rider. Yeah. Rough Rider. I've been I've been told they're just a little bit higher quality uh, than the Rough Riders. I like the looks of them better, I'm but sure they are. Uh, you got a better a better you have a better warranty on them too, so. Um, Sportsman's Guide says there's a pretty good deal going on on the 10 millimeter um, tank Foglia witness pistol I brought, which is a hell of a deal for 10 millimeter. Scott P79, how much are we talking here? Are we talking like like 4.99 or 5.99? I love one of my first pistols that I ever bought. It's the second pistol I ever bought was a Witness P Compact uh, back in the late 90s, if I'm not mistaken, and early early 2000s, like 2000 or 2001. It was a great gun, based off the uh, what CZ75 design, if I'm not mistaken. So. Um, oh, Weston says it looks like that 762 bull carrier group is forty nine ninety nine on Durkin's site. Yeah, I bought an extra five five six bolt, and it was only twenty bucks. I just bought it from some random supplier that looked decent, that you know said it was mil spec and had good reviews. Um, so yeah, they might they might charge a little bit more. It could cost a little bit more. It's a little more of a custom piece than just a common five five six bolt. So I can understand that. Um, so real real, you think they would ahead, be? Go ahead. You'd think they'd be happy to oh, get it back then because that one was more expensive. I know, and plus, the there's one. a liability of what could have happened. <laughs> you either, <laughs> hey, if they did that, I mean, you and there's medical bills involved, or somebody gets injured or killed, there's going to be a lawsuit, you know, from the family because a gun was improperly assembled. I mean, I guess it's up to you know you to prove that you that that it wasn't your fault, but or that it was at fault, but still, you know, um, man, that's just kind of crazy to think that they did that, but. 
All right, so we're going to just kind of ease on in over here to uh, 6.8 Remington SPC. I'm really, really fascinated by this round, and I've kind of read some of the pros and cons about it. And if you guys don't know anything about it, it's one of those rounds that uh, the military is, is currently testing right now. And I'm noticing this a lot as we talk about a lot of these calibers. Um, you know, some of these specialty calibers and some of these calibers we've never heard of before. There's a lot of parallels that I'm drawing between these calibers that we're learning about and kind of where the request is coming from. And so, so Squib and I had a really good discussion about this before the chat started. So some, something that a lot of these calibers have in common that we've been bringing up, you know, whether it's 458 SOCOM or 450 Bushmaster or whatever, there's always this request from the branches of the military and a lot of these spec ops guys and just branches of the military in general for some kind of a round that has more takedown power around 300 meters on out. And maybe it's because the nature of our combat is changing. We're getting away from the CQB stuff and maybe going more longer range shooting or longer range engagements that I'm seeing this on like five or six different calibers. There's requests from the military community asking the ammo manufacturers, asking the firearms manufacturers to, to make something that's delivering better terminal performance than 556. I'm not saying 556 is dead and I'm not saying that 556 is inadequate. But it is kind of funny that this is kind of coming from all these different, and this is like over the last 15 or 20 years we've been seeing this. Um, you know, they, they want something that's that's lighter weight than, than 762 by 51 or 308 Winchester, but they want something that's got better better performance, you know, something more on par like 762 by 39. Um, and a lot of this is not just a marketing ploy from the firearm, from the ammunition companies, you know. They're not just coming out with these new calibers on their own because they're happy selling what they're selling. But when there's a request for a new caliber, then it really starts to take off and pick up some steam. Um, a lot of these, a lot of these, uh, these military branches are asking for ammo that's compatible with the AR platform, at least to be able to use the lower. Something that just requires either a new barrel, new barrel, new bolt, new bolt carrier group, or you know, a new complete upper, and so on. And 6.8 uh, Remington SPC is one of those calibers that's that's starting to gain some momentum. So much so right now that there's, I believe, four or five different rifles that the military is doing some trials testing on with the 6.8. So we'll talk about the uh, the history of the 6.8. Um, and then we'll kind of discuss, you know, 6.8 SPC versus 270. Why do we need to bother? Well, they're completely different applications, in my opinion. Now, you can get a 270, you know, long action, semi-automatic carbine. You can get this, okay? Um, they're expensive. You can get, you know, 270 chambered ARs, right? But the 6.8 um, SPC is, is, is more, it's inexpensive, it's less expensive than, than a 270 upper. But there's completely different applications and performance and so on. So, so real quick, the question I have, and I'm kind of directing this one right at Squib. Does 5.56 need to be replaced? Is the nature of our combat changing so much that we need a round that can handle, that, that, that produces better terminal performance out of a shorter barrel, out of a 16-inch barrel, at to say three or four hundred meters than what five five six can currently deliver. So is five or anybody can chime in on the panel. I don't care. Is five five six adequate for for its combat application today? Is it an outdated? We're looking at what sixty years of the two twenty three Remington or or five five six round. I I think it does the job. You have other weapons in your fire team in your platoon. You have other weapons to support support actions depending on how big the, the unit is. So you're going to have mm -hmm. some other calibers, you're going to have some other weapon styles that perform a different job. But overall, I think I think it does just fine. There's there's always been this whole thing, you know, it's a little wimpy round, it doesn't do this, is it 30 calibers, better for this, better for that. And then people complain about weight. It just goes back and forth. It's just like the, the whole school of thought, you know, in the past was, why do we need semi-autos? Bolt actions are just fine if we give them semi-autos or waste ammo. So, the, you know, the military, and not just our military, but militaries around the world, have changed their, their minds about, about different things with regard to the average foot soldier, the average rifleman, and their standard infantry weapon. Specialty weapons are a whole different thing. So there's already questions popping up about the 270, or not the 270, the 6.8, you know, because you start thinking 6.5, and you start thinking 6.5 Grenolin and Creedmoor and so on. So 
So what what is the 6.8 Remington SPC? Real quick little history lesson on it. Okay, it's a rimless bottleneck to intermediate rifle cartridge that was developed by Remington in collaboration with members of the U.S. Army Marksmanship Unit, United States uh, Special Operations Command to possibly replace the 5.56 NATO cartridge in short-barreled uh, rifles and carbines. So it's based on the 30, 30 Remington cartridge. Whereas your 270 is based on the 30 out six brass, if I'm not mistaken, um, it's midway between 556 by 45 NATO and 762 by 51 NATO in bore diameter. It uses the same bullet as the 270 Winchester hunting cartridge. 6.8 SPC cartridge was designed to address the deficiencies of the terminal performance of the 556 NATO cartridge currently in service with the armed forces of all NATO aligned countries. That's why I have a problem with. Wikipedia, because because what you just said, Squib, totally disagrees with that statement that was made. And I, I do have to agree with you. It works, and it's been working. We haven't been losing too many battles lately, right? The cartridge was the result of the Enhanced Rifle Cartridge Program. The 6.8 SPC was initially developed by MSG Steve Holland and Chris Murray, a United States Army Marksman unit gunsmith to offer superior lethality over 5.56 in an M16 pattern service rifle with minimal loss of magazine capacity and a negligible increase in recoil. The goal is to create a cartridge that would bridge the gap between 5.56 and 7.62 by 51. Um, and it also delivers better performance out of a shorter barrel CQB rifle than uh, 5.56. Now, just as a comparison, just get this out here right now. As compared with 270 Winchester, you know, grain per grain, um, the 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 six point eight SPC. You're looking at about eighty percent of the power and, and and velocity of the two seventy Winchester. Just in general, that's just a general statement. You could load a six point eight SPC to perform like a two seventy Winchester. You can custom tailor ammo to do whatever you want these days. But it it's it to sit there and say, well, just go with two seventy instead. Whole different application, whole different idea. Yes, they both use the same bullet, but it pretty much stops there. There's different intention. There's different application, in my opinion. Um, I don't know, guys. What do you think about that? Should should we be looking at something a little more powerful than five five six? Any thoughts on that before uh, before I kind of turn it over to everyone? What do you guys think? I can tell I you know. this: I'm no expert. If, if I went back on active duty and they said you have to provide your own firearm, we don't have enough guns to go around. You can bring any service rifle. You know, we'll provide you the ammo or we'll, we'll dig up, you know, it's got, but it's got to be a service rifle, something that we've got a ammo in the inventory for. I take my M1 Garand before I took my AR-15 every single time. And people go, but the M1 Garand's only got eight rounds and you've got to feed it with in-block clips. It doesn't have detachable magazine and it's heavy. And it's I'll take that 30 out 6 and eight rounds at a time with that heavy rifle every single time over the M16, and that's not to say the M16 sucks, or the AR-15, or the M4, or whatever. It's not to say that it sucks, but having shot both, I can tell you I, pref I, I prefer that platform, and that hard-hitting 30-06 round, that 308 bullet with that much power behind it, is going to not only be anti-personnel, but somewhat anti-material. So that, doesn't me that means that I don't necessarily have to rely on a machine gunner to handle that anti-structure, anti-vehicle kind of application that you can put something that's a, a, a much bigger caliber. Uh, now, as far as velocities, you know, they're both cooking along pretty fast. They're both, they'll both reach out and touch someone, yeah. that sort of thing. That mm -hmm. being said, I don't think, though, that for the average infantry in, in the United States armed forces or in any of our allies is that maybe such a, a good option because uh, of all the reasons that they, they adopted the 556. I know it's been around for a long time, but it's kind of interesting. Sometimes the technology for the ammunition can be accelerated and, and, and really you know worked and innovated and all this other to, to keep it relevant to the platform. It's the same thing with uh, fighter jets. You could have an older fighter jet, but you can put more modern radar on there, more modern fire control, more modern missiles on there, and the fighter jet just becomes a platform. So I don't know if they're all done exhausting the 5.56 bullet, the 5.56 cartridge altogether as far as what it's capable of. But I understand the logic behind wanting the larger caliber, wanting a harder hitting 
kind of kind of round. So, you know, yeah. the the opinions I have as far as whether or not we'll actually adopt it might sound counter to what I just said about my personal preference, though. And that's a good point about the allies, our allies that are invested in the, you know, our allies overseas that are invested in the 556 five, round for their firearms, for their, their ammo stocks, for their training, for their manual of arms. You know, could we, could we go with 6.8 SPC and not have our NATO allies on board? You know, what do we do when we're operating in those countries? We just start bringing our own ammo. Uh, you know, I mean, what's, I don't know, maybe that's a stupid statement, but you got a, right, you got a good point about that, Squid, but until we get the other allies on board, would it be something that would be fully adopted by the military? Would they be replacing those 5.56 M4s with, you know, 6.8 M5s, so to speak, or M4s, right? So, even yeah. though we don't all use the same service rifles, some countries do use the M16, M4 platform, and other ones don't, a lot of our rifles will mm -hmm. take those Stanig mags. They're interchangeable. The ammunition is interchangeable. To give you a good example, when I trained with Armitaire, which is the French Army, I was using their rifles, but our ammunition. So the, the standard rounds, the, the 7.6251, the 5.56 NATO, the 9mm Parabellum, those are all standard NATO rounds. That's not to say that you're not going to have certain units that are going to have something above and beyond, something specialty. You know, that Canadian sniper who, for a while, they're set the world's longest uh, uh, kill uh, with a sniper rifle, uh, was using American ammo, and it was shooting further than his Canadian 50 BMG ammo, but it was still compatible with his sniper rifle. And there's a lot of other things, too. You know, we've, we've got uh, some of the same uh, parts are interchangeable for our vehicles. We use some of the same armored vehicles. We use some of the same engines in our jets. We use some of the same kind of aircraft. We use some of the same kind of ordnance that hang off of our aircraft. Uh, some of, some of our, our, our ships and our communication stuff. Some of that stuff is interchangeable with other countries. So my thing of, is that if we adopt the 6.8, first off, what advantage does it have over the 762 by 51? If it's just as heavy, then why wouldn't you just use the 762 by 51? Because, you know, the weight thing is one of the biggest factors for the 556 5, NATO. The other thing is, how do we get our allies to jump on board with us? How do we get them to adopt it? Because that's one of the main reasons those three calibers I mentioned earlier are the standard in America. People think it's, uh, you know, the, the 5.56 five, uh, uh, will wound, and, and that's, that's better than killing because it takes more people out of the fight. And the, and the 7.62 by 51 was already the 308 Winchester. That's already American. And, and the 9 millimeters for capacity and stuff. No, all of those were adopted because our allies. And we, we have a lot of interchangeability in things with our allies. So if we go solo on the 6.8 for your standard infantry rifle, your main battle rifle, for the armed forces of America and our allies don't adopt it, what's that going to do to the whole NATO kind of thing? I don't know. I'm not sure. So will we have to, will we have to provide ammunition for them? Will we have to uh, maybe do, do mm -hmm. some, I don't know, is a lot of American tax money going to go into the infrastructure of our allies' militaries in order to, to arm them? We've, We've done it before, right? Post World War II, we were giving Garands and thirty out six to everybody, weren't we? In 1911. So, you know, will will politics now we can't get, get them involved back. in this? <laughs> yeah, now we can't get them back. But I mean, yeah, will politics yeah. will politics get involved in this sort of thing? Now, you said it, it uses a standard mag, right? No, you have to have a special. You have to have a mon oh. You have to have a special upper. Um, okay. You can use the upper receiver, but you have to have a different bolt carrier group. You have to have a different barrel. You might also no. just go with the complete upper while you're working on no, it, no, and no. then you have to have a different magazine too. It's not to fit in an mag. M4 okay. magwell. Okay. It'll yeah. fit in the magwell, but it's a different mag. What's the capacity on it? Yes. So I mean, it, uh, it, you can it, get. It, you if, have if to get a, custom made magazines, but you can get thirty round magazines or twenty round magazines for it. It's not an issue. But because um, this is a bigger is round, is ASC it bulkier? Are they longer? Uh, yeah. Looking at a picture of them, just kind of comparing the two, it is a little bit bulkier than the five five six round. I mean, you are using a larger brass case. You're going to say now. You said why not just go with the seven sixty two by fifty one because yeah. that's going to require a different lower. The idea was to use the existing lowers and the majority of our, you know, AR-15 platform or M4 platform uh, hardware without having to do more than just simply an upper and a magazine swap, and that's it. Obviously, ammo and see, That's the sort of thing the government would do, the military would do, to justify the expense. 
they say, look, we can still use the existing lower. So, okay. And I'm glad you, you, you pointed that out. And, you know, but from the weight standpoint, uh, if this thing's a heavier round or the magazines are a lot larger, now you've got to change the magazine pouches. Now you got, you know, uh, soldiers complaining about this thing gets yeah. in the way, whatever. I mean, there's just, there's all kinds of things. So if they're really going to evaluate it, it's going to go through some, some, some rough trials, I think, in order to, to, to get us to switch. But I think we're also going to, there would be some sort of push for our allies to get on board with this thing. I, I'm not saying America couldn't go it alone with our, our own cartridge and, and everybody else is still using 5.56. Five, I'm just saying, in my experience, it's just not as likely on a broad scale. Yeah. Just uh, an argument in defense of the 6.8 SPC, and this might answer a few of the questions that you asked there. 6.8 uh, SPC delivers 44% more energy than 5.56 five, in an M4 configuration at 100 to 300 meters. The 6.8 SPC is not the ballistic equivalent of 7.62 by 51, but it has less recoil has been said to be more controllable and rapid fire. It's lighter, allowing operators to carry more ammunition than would otherwise be possible with a larger caliber round. The uh, 68 generates around 2,385, I'm sorry, 1,759 foot-pounds of muzzle energy with a 115 grain bullet. And you can run different grains. In comparison, a 556 five, round uh, generates 1,325 foot-pounds of energy. So you've got uh, well, obviously, you're running, you know, twice the, the grain weight of the bullet, so you would imagine you generate more energy, but it's it's got 500 foot-pounds more energy for the 6.8. So you're definitely getting more takedown power. But again, the trade-off is going to be the cost, the support from the allies, uh, the retrofitting that's going to happen, have to happen, um, not to mention all the manuals that might have to be rewritten and the training that's going to have to change. But I'm in favor of it because, obviously, I want us to have a more powerful round that's going to eliminate our enemies <laughs> in a much quicker way. So I'm totally in favor of it. I think it'd be great. Um, but again, you know, is it going to become the next big caliber? It's going to be hard to tell because the the Army wants to make sure that this is going to be, or not the Army, so all the branches of the military are going to want to make sure that this is going to be the thing that's going to work. You know, it's going to be a suitable replacement because they're going to be investing billions of, of taxpayers' dollars into this. So I don't know. Uh, but if you are interested in uh, 6.8 SPC, you know, we always like to talk about the ammunition and so on. Um, and again, I don't want to get much into a whole lot into the ballistics in terms of velocity and energy because it's going to produce whatever barrel length you fired out of, whatever grain weight you're going to go with. Um, but you're looking at a, a fairly stout round that's going to be more powerful than 5.56. But, you know, like I said, it's almost like an 80% of the energy of a 270 um, round, you know, comparatively speaking for the same grain weight and so on because you've got less capacity for powder in the 6.8 uh, SPC. But just looking at ammunition uh, in general, you know, you can get ammo uh, new, new brass as low as 54 cents a round. So you're looking at 20 rounds for $10 and 80 cents. And again, you know, okay, well, how does this compare to, you know, 300 blackout? Well, you know, that's just another thing, too, is we've got 300 Blackout that we're also looking at, and that's starting to get adopted by certain branches of the Special Forces community. So, um, but again, just ammo in general, $10.84 for PPU, 115 grain hollow point, boat tail, 20 round boxes for $10.84. So it's not, I mean, it's pretty comparable to uh, to 300 Blackout in terms of cost, and then you can spend whatever you want. Get 1,000 rounds for $519 of PPU. 51.9 cents per round is as cheap as you're going to get it. And then it goes up from there. I mean, it's going to be loaded with, there's you know, Hornady's on board, Federal makes ammo for Privy Partisan, uh, Remington, obviously. You know, you've got a lot of options for ammo. So it's not like it's going to be terribly expensive to shoot. I mean, if you want to set that up for a nice, you know, home defensive carbine or make that your go-to-war rifle, I suppose, you'd be looking at a fairly stout round that's going to get the job done. Um but again, it's not, you know, it's not not a brand new round. It's not the new kid on the black. It, it originally was designed in 2002. 2002 to 2004 was the initial development of the round. So it's not exactly like, and a lot of these rounds we talk about, you always say, oh, it's a hipster round. It's just the new popular round. Some of them have been around for 15 or 20 years. You know, like 6.5 Creedmoor has been out for, I think, what, 15 years or something. So, you know, I mean, it's it's not like these things are, are, are brand new. I mean, they're getting battle tested. But, uh, and if you want to get into shooting 6.8 SPC, and we like to cover some of the firearms, you want to talk, talk about the cost. Lead uppers for 400, 350 to 400, which is not bad. Um, complete rifles, you know, you can spend whatever you want, but I'm seeing, you know, you can get a radical uh, for, for radical firearms for 566, Savage for 980 for a recon. Um, Daniel Defense makes one, Barrett makes one, $1,600, $1,800. But, 
you could get into a complete rifle for you know six hundred dollars or less. That's not not too bad to get into a new caliber. Um, magazines. Uh, looking at it, LWRC makes a magazine, makes a P mag. Okay, LWRC magazine P mag six point eight SBC for twenty three fifty. So you're gonna spend about a, about a ten to twelve dollar premium over a basic five five six mag. Um, the ASC mag that I bought, I think it was fifteen dollars for a twenty rounder. Uh, Ruger makes a magazine for it also that you can get. They make a five round, ten round, twenty. And that LWRC magazine, I don't know if that's a twenty or thirty. I'm gonna click on this real quick and see what it says. That's a 30 round. Oh, and it says it fits LWRC only. Okay, so that's where you got to watch out too. So the ASC magazines, um, I, I used one because you can use the same magazines with your 224 Valkyrie. So that's one nice thing about it. But again, if you want to get into 6.8 SPC, obviously I encourage you to. And there's not a lot of uh, ballistic gains uh, once you go beyond 16 inch barrels. So it's not like you got to tow to 20 or 24 inch to really notice a difference. You're not really going to notice a whole heck of a lot of a difference. I think it's about for every... Every 25 millimeters of barrel length, I can't remember what they said, you're adding like 25 feet per second of velocity. So you're not really gaining a whole lot to go past the 16-inch barrel length. Uh, and, and again, the gun was developed essentially around the 16-inch barrel, more or less to be the replacement for the M4. So again, it's another one of those calibers that a lot of people have asked about. I think it's an interesting caliber. I think it offers a lot of possibility. And we'll have to see in you know five or 10 years if it becomes the new standard that the military decides to go with um obviously i would think that this would need some sort of battle testing i don't know if how they if they test ammunition beyond just simply range testing and durability and ballistics if they actually have units try this stuff because i i'm not seeing that it's actually been issued yet some police departments are picking up on it but you know they tend to have a little more flexibility over their choice of, of caliber and firearm and so on um but as for you know actual military adoption Let's see here. I'm trying to see if anybody's actually used it. Um, it says the U.S. DEA has allowed individual agents to purchase M6A2 uh, 6.8 Remington SPC carbines as their duty weapon. Uh, the Jordanian Army is adopting it as their new caliber. They've already started purchasing rifles chambered in it. There's a contract between LWRC, Magpul, Lion Tech Systems, and the Saudi Royal Guard for around 36,000 6.8 PDWs. And an undisclosed amount of 90 grain, 90 grain gold dot training ammo uh, and proprietary magazine. So it's slowly starting to see some adoption out there. 6.8 is also being produced in a squad automatic weapon or saw for the U.S. by the U.S. machine gun armory. And so it's it's slowly starting to take off, but uh, it hasn't quite launched yet the way that you might think it would because of just the interest in it. But again, there's no lack of firearms out there too. So that's the important thing if you want to get into it. The guns and ammo are definitely out there. You know, it's just a matter of finding what's uh, what's going to work for you. So, if they're testing it on a quad yeah. automatic weapon platform, I think that gives it a lot more potential to gain acceptance. If it works in, in a, on a saw platform, especially if they're going to try to introduce a new a new saw, maybe not necessarily just uh, you know a rechamber M two forty nine, but maybe something new and improved. And, and we can get some of our allies behind us on that. Or if, if that gets a lot of attention, that may be the thing that draws it in as a cartridge for the main battle rifle. Because your squad automatic weapon is going to be chambered in the same caliber as your standard infantry rifle. Whereas your machine gun is not necessarily going to be chambered in the same. So that, I, that alone right there, I think, is um, something that's going to give it, if it performs well. we'll see, you know, let's see how it does. But if it performs well in a squad automatic weapon, that might be what really helps uh, push it through. One of one of the things. Yeah, uh, six hours actually. The, one of the one of the four companies that's competing for that contract for the next basically saw replacement. Um, I've watched some testing videos on it, and then I, I think they also make a M4 pattern rifle in six eight also. Um, Dead Horse says I've already made cold bore hits at one thousand yards with six point eight. In not ideal weather, it is so freaking hard to do that with five five six with just a five mile an hour wind. So yeah, you know, just the uh, just the just the energy and the stability of the round itself. Seeing if anybody else has made some comments. Apologize, guys, I have been looking at the uh, the uh, comments lately because I was reading kind of the history and looking at the adoption of it. Uh, a little bit of talk about three hundred blackout. Stay away from one in ten tw twist rates in six point eight. Okay, that's good to know. 
a uh, little bit of talk about the 224 Valkyrie also. 6.8 is such a good round if the barrel is right with a 111 twist and a 5R or 3R rifling. Okay, so this is good stuff to know, especially people that might be looking into one of these rifles, say, for around the holidays. Um, Mr. Big Kid says, I'm building my 300 Blackout due to the easily obtained subsonic ammo and compatibility with my suppressor. Exactly. That's awesome. Um, Hunan's line is in anyway, says, please don't compare 300 Blackout to 6A. Totally different mindset. No, I won't. I won't. I understand completely, dude. Yeah, no, I get that totally. You know, if anything, I would compl I would compare the 6A more to the 270 Winchester, but... Or 270 Remington. I'm totally throwing a blank here. Uh, one truly for better power over 556 five, and one's for suppressed and non suppressed close quarters. Dude, I get it, man. No, I understand completely. I'd say maybe we could have more of a comparison of 300 blackout with 762 by 39, maybe. Um, or even just, you know, 300 blackout with 556. Five, uh, let's see here. Try to see if there's any other questions. 6.8 uh, is a reloader's caliber at this time, though. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything else here. I think that's pretty much it. Anybody know how difficult it is to reload 300 blackout? Mr. Big Kid was asking that question. Squib, can you chime in on that? How difficult is it to reload 300 blackout? Any more difficult than any other rifle ca caliber nope. that you might be doing? No like more five, five, six? At all. No? no, no more difficult than any other bottleneck cartridge. It's easy. Uh, I actually, re I've made some uh, 300 blackout reloads before I finished building the rifle for, or assembling the rifle. So it's very easy to do. I've tried, tried a few different bullets and powder charges, and I haven't had any issues. So if you can do, if, you, if you've done any other bottleneck cartridges, it's all, all the same. Now, if you want to mm -hmm. cut down 223, 556 brass, you can do that, but there's so much 300 blackout brass out there, or you can just buy 300 blackout ammo and pick up the cases and you've got your own brass. Uh, for me, the head yeah, stamp I got a to, bunch of them know, I'm sitting on right now. <laughs> I want the head stamp to say 300 blackout. I don't want it to have a 5.56 five, or 223 marking. But if you're doing your own mm -hmm. stuff, you know, you can cut it down and you can you can size up the neck. If you go to a channel called Deuce and Guns, he's got a video where he shows how you do that. But uh, for me, uh, I want the head stamp to match match the actual cartridge. So all, all my stuff says 300 blackout. They're 300 AA. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Dead Horse says I use regular mags with just a follower swap, so maybe that's all you need on that. If you want to use your current mags, you can. Uh, you're probably going to lose a few, obviously, rounds of capacity because of the increase in the diameter of the brass. Uh, hopefully I didn't miss any other comments here. Guitar Man Pete was talking about how a uh, 6.8 SPC round went right through a hog and kept going lengthwise. Okay, that's pretty savage. That's pretty beastly. I like that. Um, I think that's pretty much the C. Guys are pushing 90 grain gold dots at 3,000 feet per second on the 6.8 form again. You have to have the right twist rate and rifling. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting the right ammo with the right you know twist and having that ideal twist rate with the correct grain weight of the bullet, and you're good to go. So let's see. Otherwise, they're talking about a, uh, a fake uh, Gizzard Gary that's out there. That's not Gizzard Gary. He's got the moderator's wrench. It's got to be Gizzard Gary, man. All right, so yeah, so that's kind of our, our discussion there on uh, 6.8 SPC and kind of where it's going and, and what you can do with it. And, and again, you know, um, look around for some of those uppers, maybe play around with it. The nice thing is you can get it, you can get some mags for it or modify your current mags and uh, go out and shoot it, see what you think about it. You can always, you know, sell the upper if you're not happy with it. Then again, that's the nice thing about having that, that M4 compatibility that a lot of these calibers we're talking about. You know, you can get uppers for between $200 and $400 or more. So you've got the option to swap out different calibers and try different things out there. Um, again, I, I like that 450 Bushmaster and the 458 SOCOM. Uh, those are some really cool calibers that I'm, I'm really interested in at this point. Again, got to get my 762 by 39 out at one of these points here. We'll get that taken care of and do some shooting with it and see how it runs. So, yeah, man, that's, that's a lot of information for one evening. We covered a lot of ground tonight, man. We talked about coffee and guns and Black Friday and and everything else under the sun. So, um, gun snob or, or, uh, you want to chime in with anything else here before we go ahead and call it? No, I'm, I've been researching this round. I'm pretty interested in it because yeah. I'm a big fan of 270. So I thought it'd be kind of a neat, something neat. Yeah. Don't, don't let the 270 guys and the 6.8 crowd guys get into a fight with each other, a bar fight, because it's not it. Like I said, they're different intentions and it's okay. There's, there's, you can get, a uh, an AR chambered in 270, and you can get an AR chambered in 6.8. There's enough guns for everyone, you know. Grant, you're going to pay a little bit more. I'm for too the poor for an AR chambered in 270. What about it? 
I said I'm too poor to buy an AR oh, chamber in two seconds. I was we were looking at was it like is it like Gorilla something or another that makes one that's like thirty five hundred dollars or something? I don't even know. Um, you can almost just cast your own for that price, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and the 270s, I mean, yeah, nobody's going to argue that the 6.8 is superior to 270 because it's not. All they have in common is just the bullet, and that's it. There's nothing. That's where it stops. So, All right, man. Squib, anything else you want to chime in about? Any other uh, final words of wisdom before we call it? Uh, I just appreciate you letting me get on my 2 a soapbox at the beginning of the show. Yeah. I, uh, I was open carrying over the Thanksgiving long weekend, but I didn't open carry the day of all days. So uh, he kind of <laughs> yeah. he kind of yep. let me in my own mind redeem myself a little bit by running my mouth about just what we what we can all do in our own ways, different ways to support the Second Amendment. Thanks for the invite today and good show. Yeah, no problem. And I know that, I mean, I, I got to apologize because I don't always do as many activist videos as I probably should, but I do, and I do rally videos, and I do always support the Second Amendment, but I mean, unfortunately, I can't always cover every second matters because I might not have a live show, but it doesn't mean I should mention it anyway, so it is very important. So get on over to uh, everysecondmatters.com and find out what that's all about because all of this that you see, all this over here, this stuff doesn't happen unless we have a Second Amendment, right? Not my, Not this channel, not this program, none of us talking. You know, all, all these little little weapons you see in our little thumbnails are going to go bye-bye if we don't have a Second Amendment. So just keep that in mind, right? Okay, so, uh, all right. Uh, I guess we had a few little final plugs from Gun Snob and, and Squib Load. And you guys, make sure you check out their channels and check out the Kingpin's channel and check out Night Strike's channel. Make sure you guys uh, get on over there and check out the uh, check out guntube.org. And uh, joining us tonight, we got uh, Kingpin out there and Poor Conservative, and Kingpin was over here. Uh, the juice is out there also. He says, so box, that's to say the least this guy loves to hear himself speak. Okay. So juice was joining us tonight. Uh, Mr. Big kid, poor conservative dead horse was out there. Gizzard Gary was joining in Jason Stewart out there. Uh, Hunan's line is it anyway was out there. Also finally pronounced your name correctly this week. I had some trouble with it last week. Uh, let's see. Had a lot of people joining in. Snob's wife was out there. Guitar man, Pete midnight range was out there also. Again, poor conservative. Tim Esk was out there. Uh, I think Weston Weston Probst was out there. Tacos and French fries was joining in. Ecota was out there quite a bit. E Rock was in the house. What's going on, E Rock? Uh, Patrick was out there too. D Temp was out there. D Temp sixty two. So guys, I want to thank all of you for watching tonight. We'll have another discussion uh, next uh, Monday. William Keller says I vote. Just give the troops an AR for up close and a rocket launcher for distance. There you go, Will and Killer. That'll take care of it. Heck yeah, man. Let's just, heck yeah, I'm, I'm all for it, man. Whatever will get us out of there quicker. That's fine with me. Uh, General Relativity, Relativity was joining in tonight. Cannot speak, Rich White was out there. Scott P79, Zorro117 in the house. I bought an AR500 plate carrier. Good for you, sir. Good to have one. Uh, make sure you train with it, practice with it, and realize just what kind of mass you're, you're carrying because it's it can be pretty substantial. Uh, Blue Steel 44 in the house, and I think that's pretty much about it. New York Outcast was out there too, and the Pope Joy was out there too. Your Next was out there. All right, so I want to thank all you guys for joining us. This has been Caliber Corner, episode number 112, where, where we talked about the importance behind Every Second Matters. We discussed a couple good uh, gun deals out there, some Black Friday specials, and also talked about the uh, the 6.8 SPC cartridge and why it may be the next big thing, right? Make it the next big thing. Go out there and pick up a rifle chambered in. I think you're going to have fun with it. So in the meantime, guys, that is it. So thank you for joining us. I want you guys to have fun. I want you to be safe. Uh, make sure you guys check out uh, Matt's uh, Guns and Geeks podcast tonight starting up at uh, 8 o'clock over on the Never Enough Ammo channel. And uh, make sure you head on over to gunchannels.com and you can see what's going on for live shows this evening. Who else is going to have a show going on? And I think that's it. So have fun. Be safe, guys. And uh, as you know, we will talk to you soon. Y'all take care. Have a good one. Bye, Alicia. <laughs>